Hi this is Phil from Make Tech Easier and welcome to this video about making yourself a Plex media server. We've spoken about Plex before on the blog, but this is our first visit to the world of Plex on YouTube. With the move away from optical disc media towards digital downloads, it's compelling to imagine a totally digital film library in your home. It could be you've got a large DVD or Blu-ray collection, but you would prefer to have a media server and all your films accessible digitally as a sort of personal Netflix. It's a good thing to have. It's possible to do all this with Plex, a server to serve your digital movies to your TV, your tablet or your phone anywhere in the house, and even if your data plan can stand it outside your house over the internet. What is it? Plex is a media platform enabling you to stream films and TV shows in your home to any device from files on a server. The way it works is this. You install the Plex server software on a desktop or laptop, wherever your film folder is located. You can have a single server or multiple servers if you want to pull the movies on everyone's computer into one resource. Either way, you have a library of videos. Then you need a client to view the films via the Netflix-like interface. For TV sets, you can install Plex on an old Apple TV or Amazon Firebox, or more cheaply, you can make your own Plex TV box from a Raspberry Pi computer using software called Rasplex. Setting up Plex. To get the Plex server on a desktop machine, download the server software, link in the description, and install it. This Plex server doesn't have to be a dedicated computer to this one task. For example, we use Plex on all our machines and serve videos from folders on Windows, Apple Mac, and Linux computers. Next, you designate folders on the computer to be a Plex library. Once you select the folder with all your films in it, Plex will use its databases to add cover art and descriptions to all your films. In order to do this, it's a good idea to name your files properly, or the database has nothing to go on. For films, it's a good idea to have the title and the date as part of the file name. For TV shows, it's a smart move to have the name of the show and then the season and episode numbers in the format S01E01, where S is the season and E is the episode. This naming strategy helps the Plex databases to scrape the info for the metadata on the files. If Plex locates your film on the online databases, it will attach the most popular artwork for each entry, but you can change this by clicking on the pencil in the corner of the cover art and choosing Poster. Then you'll get a selection of alternatives from the DVD cover and the film poster, and you can choose your own preference. You can even add a picture of your own. Setting up the client. Okay, so you have a server with a library ready to be shown. Making a client on the Raspberry Pi is easy. Just download the Rasplex software, link in the description, and burn the software to a TF or SD card and put it in the Pi. The faster the Pi, the better. But it works okay with a Pi Zero or a Pi 2. You may find the slower Pi's struggle a little with high resolution videos and streaming, but basically get the fastest Pi you can afford and it'll work fine. We use an old Pi 2 and we have, so far, not gotten any playback problems with any files, either 720 or 1080 HD. We imagine that playing back 4K videos might be slightly less easy, but provided you have a fast Pi, overclocked with heat sinks, anything is possible. A good pro tip is to add a cheap USB remote to control the Plex client from your armchair. This one, for example, only costs a few bucks and works perfectly right out the box without any configuration. Portable Plex. You can also access your Plex server with iOS and Android with the Plex app. It's free to try, but if you want to watch unlimited duration videos, you have to stump up a small fee to unlock it. It's only about four or five bucks. Once you have all your devices set up, you can play movies from your server anytime. DRM and ripping. The limitation of the Plex server is that it really can't serve DRM protected content. So if your purchased movies contain any kind of copyright protection from Apple or Amazon, then you can't set up a Plex server to play them. However, legally obtained movies and TV without DRM will play. There are a few services which sell digital movie files and don't use DRM, but by far the most legal and easiest way to have digital copies of media that you own is to buy DVDs and Blu-rays and rip them to disc. This means you can digitise the content you legally own and place it onto your server. Plus, on the upside, you will have a backup on optical disk should the file ever become corrupted. The best and easiest way to rip a DVD or Blu-ray to disk is Handbrake, a cross-platform movie tool which is easy to use and free. 
Just select your source disk, choose a preset for your target movie, select a location for the finished file and boom. The downside is that it takes a long time to rip and compress your files. A commercial alternative is DVD Fab, which we've reviewed on the blog before, which makes great DVD and Blu-ray ripping software. Links to our review and free trials for those softwares in the description. Of course, you can disable the DRM on your purchased movies, but that's not something we can legally encourage you to do. Also, don't forget there is a lot of content out there which doesn't have DRM on archive.org, for example. Conclusion Plex is a perfect solution, virtualizing your movie collection for easy and fast access on all your devices. And better yet, you can access any film in your collection at the touch of the remote without ever leaving your chair. You may have to get up for some popcorn though. Okay, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and leave your comments below. See you next time.